What's so up? for those who don't listen, because they can't, because they're at home, it, it clicked more than than four times. I should just... They don't know, know what we're talking about. They don't at all. That's fine. Anyways, I'm Bo. I'm Brandon. And this is Two Tunes Podcast. Yeah. Basically, uh, we've probably mentioned this before. When, yeah. When Bo 100%. hits record, it does like a, usually a four count yeah, count and it's counting. But when you pause it or whatever in the middle of a thing, uh, it does more. Yep. And we were surprised. So it'll go like click, 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 and then we're ready to come in on you know what would be like beat five, but then there's still four more beats. Bo is confused by the internet right now. I, I am very much confused by the internet because somebody that we were just talking about is on a lawyers and consultants website. Yes. Okay. They used to do that. Yeah. Well, it's still up there. Anyways, good on them. Cool. So we talk about two tunes and, <laughs> sure. and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, there was something I was going to talk about. Oh, it's going to be a bad episode. So here's the deal. Let's start off. So I've had a bad, like lower back for a while. Oh yeah. And I've I've known within the past year and a half or so that I have herniated disc. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a shot in the back, shot, in the spine, shot, 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 uh, shot, shot, which helped for like a little bit. In the- and then lately I, well, for a long time, I've just been like dealing with pain. Like I just live in chronic pain mm-hmm. and I saw this thing that this one like local chiropractor does. Yeah. And I was like, well, that sounds kind of intriguing. Maybe that could help, you know, plus just general, maybe chiropractic could help. I don't know. Okay. So I set up an appointment to meet with them and they're like, what brings you in and whatever. And I'm like, well, I have this pain and you know. I know I have this herniated disc thing and Mm -hmm. I said, I saw you have this like particular type of therapy and I I, I don't know if that's for me, but you know, I need, I need something, I need Mm -hmm. some kind of help here. So like, okay. So they did x-rays and then they did this, they do a thing called like thermography and it's like this like scan Mm -hmm. thing of your back and it like shows temperature things Mm -hmm. and whatever. And really dark blue is bad. Really dark red is bad. They want lots of like yellows and light blues and things. Mm -hmm. So Anyway, then Wednesday, that was like last Monday, and then Wednesday I I go for my like follow up where they like show me my X rays and talk about it and whatever. <laughs> the first thing the doctor says when he walks in, he's like, "Man, your back is a or your spine is a mess." <laughs> I was like, "Yep, <laughs> not surprising." So not only do I have like things just generally out of alignment, yeah. like side to side, you know, like your spine should go straight up and down. Yeah. Like when you look at it front to back, not only do I have stuff that's like, you know, curvy so you have and, scoliosis. I don't have scoliosis. No, no, no. But like, but things get out of alignment, you know? So not only do I have that, but then like individual vertebrae are like twisted Ooh. the ways that like in ways that they shouldn't be. Yeah. And I have like bone spur things growing and like some other stuff. It's, it's a, it's a whole mess. Wow. Yeah. So he did provide me with like a little bit of good news of like, he he was straight with me. He's like, I can't fix you. Like, I can't get you to a hundred percent. You're just never going to, yeah. you know, like I'll be straight with you about that. But he's like, I am fully confident that we can get you to the best that you can be mm-hmm. like the best alignment, no pain, like that kind of stuff. So that I feel good about. So I have like, I'm going to start tomorrow a 90 day intensive treatment plan okay and then we'll reevaluate from there basically so All wish right. me luck i do i really hope because he's like what are you trying to get out of this i'm like less pain pain free like comfort like you know more comfort pain free so he's like we can get you there we can do that so yeah and then he was like your neck's messed up too he's like he's like which is worse your back or your neck and i'm like oh my back by like a thousand he's like well your neck's not great either it's like oh okay I do get like a lot of headaches and stuff too, so that's mm-hmm. that's partially related to that. So I'm gonna do backflips later, no, no. like after all this, yeah, no, like no, all, no. all this nope. stuff. You're gonna be no, like, I, I just I, I can do somersaults. I would just like to sit for 20 minutes and not yeah. feel a lot of pain when I get up. Yeah. So yeah, so I'll I'll keep you all posted on my yeah. But that was the quote. Man, your spine is a mess. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. <laughs> So any good, any, any, I mean, that's like, that's terrible news. Yeah. Any, any good things? Uh, any fun things? Um, I don't know. I've just been busy, man. Grad yeah. school on top of teaching is, is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're taking three classes. Yeah. It's just like this constant. <clears throat> that's the other thing is there's no like let up. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to look at a calendar but, and see like what is. So where this episode will land, this will be in October. This is October 3rd. Oh, so guess what I'm doing this Saturday then? 
Going to see my show? No. I hate you. I didn't even know you had a show. Yeah, I have a con- I have, like the play. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow. You uh, are mean. I will see my school's play um, to support my students. Not but yours. Other, well, and it's, you know, people like, I know there's people that go to like all different high school musicals and different things. It's like, it's not that I don't love them and support them and whatever, but like, I will see mine because yep. I'm part of it. Mm-hmm. I might see yours. Are you a part of it or just because it's your school? The musical? No, the musical play. I'm part of. Yeah, yeah. But the play I'm seeing just because it's my school. Yeah. And I might see your guys' musical only because like sister school and like different weekends and different things. But yeah. yours is early this year too. It is, yeah. But uh, plays no. But no, on Saturday, October seventh, I will be seeing Auntie Donna, and I'm so excited. They're okay. an Australian sketch comedy group. Oh, uh, okay. And they are freaking hilarious. And they're doing a world tour right now, and they're coming to Philly, and I'm going to see them. I'm really, really stoked. If folks have not heard anti donna before it's a u n t y like anti and then donna like the name donna um there's a few ways you can check them out they have a podcast which is like improvised every week they come up with like a premise or a storyline or whatever and then they like improvise around it uh that's good they have a bunch of stuff on youtube like a bunch of like film sketches and things which are hilarious and there's usually like a theme they do like they would do like seasons almost yeah so there was one like where they're in high school and there was one like where they were running a a cafe or a bar or something like that um and then they have a show on netflix called auntie donna's big old house of fun which is really really funny and then um they have a show that's on only australian tv currently but yeah they're really really great and if you can see them live i'm i'm sure they're phenomenal so they also have an album of like silly songs yeah i mean most most uh i'll do that comedians do that but like songs yeah yeah okay i know so but yeah they're hilarious and i can't wait to see them like adam sandler yeah but like he was a musical thing yeah yeah. i think they just like were like we're just gonna make an album or whatever okay so or uh hard and firm with chris hardwick and i forget what the guy the other guy's real name is i don't know or what his name is but they did a musical thing yeah the band was called hard and firm nice like I forget what the other uh, something something firm something with firm yeah like Chris Hardwick and something Furman yeah I, I think it's still tired from last week Bo <laughs> yeah I don't think it's gonna change yeah especially with that back yeah yeah, yeah it's uh, Chris Furman or Mike Furman Mike Furman Chris Hardwick and and Mike F- Furman hard and firm that's pretty hard good and firm that's good um. Comedy Central presents something about Radiohead. Okay. <laughs> Ultimately breaking up for good into after the success of their song "Rodeo Head," a bluegrass style metal medley of Radiohead covers, nice. the duo released what would turn out to be their first and only album, "Horses and Grasses," featuring the song "Pi P I," nice. which has gained popularity from the music video directed by Keith. Not Stolzfus. Oh. Shoalfield. Okay. Hard and firm. Cool. I can't wait till they're on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, we could. If you want. I'll bring it up. Next, next, not really. And then Doug Benson did a thing. Isn't, who, Doug Benson, yeah, I know it, yeah. Yeah, you know him. Super high me. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Doug Benson's 61. Yeah. Seems right, but also how old, how how old is Chris Hardwick? Forty-eight. No, he's fifty-one. Okay, so he's nine years old than me. Yeah. No, he's ten years older than me. He just hasn't had his birthday yet. Uh, like I have. Yeah. So, but anyways, my turn. We're here to first. talk about two tunes. Yeah. Do you speak French? Uh, do I parlez-vous français? <laughs> no. Uh, so I found this band, the traditional through their uh record label anchor 84 who mm-hmm. else is on anchor 84 bo Talked um, about this a couple weeks ago i'm gonna get it wrong but um plus 44 no the the the, the mark no. i like that band though i like the plus this. plus 44 yeah i like that that album yeah uh no uh church girls oh yeah yeah you did talk about yeah anchor so 84. i was because i a few weeks ago i think i said on the podcast i was like oh i have never I never bought Still Blooms by yes. Church Girls. I should buy that yeah. on vinyl. And so I did. And then I was like, oh, like what? Who else is like 
let me just see. And I was like, they were having like some sales and stuff. I think it was maybe over like Labor Day weekend mm-hmm. or something. They were having some sales and I was like, okay, well, some other things are, are discounted here. Let me, let me just like listen through a few of these bands and see like who I like. And so um, I pulled up the, the traditionals album that this song is on, uh, was one of the things that was there and so i like listened to this track because it's the first track and i was like "Ooh, i like this and so i bought that as well and a couple of seven inches Mm -hmm. that were just like a (laughs) dollar and i was like yeah i can spend a dollar on something that even if i don't like it it's cool um but yeah oh sorry it's the their ep so the queen of heaven is the ep name and the song is probably by the by the traditional and i now own it on vinyl which i'm excited about and I just shoot. I just lost their their what their Facebook page. Yeah. Give me a second. Nope. Stay up. So yeah. they they are not a band anymore. <laughs> that sucks. They broke up in 2019. They played their last show. Yeah, this is their post from January 22nd, 2019. It's hard to find the words to write to describe how this makes me feel after seven long years of making music, touring the country, uh, signing a deal with the Almighty Anchor 84. Putting out three records, going through th- three vans, meeting some of the best people we know, and making some of the best friends we have. It's time to move on and finish this chapter of our lives. And they've gone to say like a little bit more, but basically they are no longer a band. They were they were from 2012 to 2019. So still have music, obviously. Um, one of their people, John, has a podcast called Story Time because mm-hmm. they posted that on one point. So I don't know if that's any good, but. Feel free to check it out. Anyway, this is Parley Vu Francais by The Traditional. Early two thousands punk is what I I am reminded of. Okay, I can hear that. Especially like the the recording quality and yeah. and how everything is. I would go see this band. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it just like hooked me right away. It's like it's really well written song, well recorded, like crafted and recorded and everything. Like the singer's voice. I don't know why, but it feels like I didn't listen to this song. Okay. Did you not? I did listen to it, and I liked it, but it just feels like I'm listening to it for the first time. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. (laughs) a lot of breaks in yeah. that part which would be great live because yeah. then you have all the crowd to sing all those lines yeah. and I think that might be what they were going for but Maybe. they just didn't yeah. get it kind of early brand new Okay, I, ha- I kind of hate to say enough, that but... you shouldn't <laughs> but kind of yeah that guitar tone. It's very... Yeah. It'd be hilarious if it was like they had the same members. Not the same members, but like... Uh. One member. I've only listened to the rest of this EP. Yeah. I haven't listened to their other stuff, but... Yeah, I, just, I, I dig that as well. I was also like hoping like 
please don't just like the first song like like all of it but i do obviously do you ever have that though where you like find a song and then like you go to like listen to the rest and you're like no it's just that one song yeah that's the only yeah. one yeah it's happened to me a few times definitely especially like back in the day when you might have only heard a single and then you go buy the album mm-hmm. and then you're like ah nope i wonder what that like why that is sometimes like how can they write one good one and then like the rest are not not even that they're bad but just like something's off about because they write that because they write song, that one like to they, be and they, like the hit or whatever i guess well, yeah but. i don't i don't think it's that way because like i was in this band um before the code mm-hmm. and i came to practice one day and they were already like jamming and they wrote a song and i walked in and i'm like this is really good mm-hmm. and like that was the only time that we ever did that wrote a song that good i don't even know what it was i don't yeah. even know if we ever recorded it because like we <laughs> we went in to like we went and we recorded with christian uh-huh. listener of the podcast um we recorded with him in pittsburgh and we wrote we recorded all these songs but we had already like that was kind of like before i joined the band okay. like they wrote some of the songs before i joined the band and then like we wrote stuff together but then we kept writing mm-hmm. we were writing all these other songs and and the newer songs were better, but we didn't record them. Oh, of course. And then I think, I don't know if Christian actually mentioned this, but, but they, um, they very much was like, like, why aren't you recording those other songs? Those were way better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. This is what we have. Yeah. That's funny. So. Yeah. I guess it is that you can like really craft like one or two. Yeah. Like, like sort of hits are really good but then the other ones are just end up being like kind of filler but yeah i can't think of specific bands off the top of my head but I, that's definitely happened to me before where i hear that song and then i'm like well that's that's it that's the only one yep so so i i want to talk about music business stuff for a second boring it, it really it really is it really is so like i at one point and not not too long ago was very much like releasing stuff yeah. like consistently mm-hmm. every four to six weeks. And then in May was like the last time that I released something mm-hmm. and then I just didn't do anything. And there's this thing called discovery mode on uh, Spotify yeah. where like you submit songs and they'll like push them out. And if like, if somebody listens to it and actually like sticks with it, they'll like push more. It's, okay. it's kind of weird. Oh. Uh, and it, that's where I got to almost like 10,000 monthly listeners. Mm hmm. And now I'm back down to like a hundred, maybe two hundred. Oh, <laughs> like it was giant. It was, and that was in yeah. March, a giant leap right. in March, and then it just kind of like slowly went down. Um, where in was it September? Mm-hmm. I had X amount of songs. No, it wasn't September because this is September. It was in August. August, I had nine songs, and like my listeners was down three percent. Okay, and they, it's kind of like you, you. The way it works is. Like they get a commission of mm-hmm. what you select, sure, um, and it's it's thirty percent. But normally, like if you're if you're if you're doing Spotify right, yeah. you'll get more numbers. And but in in August I didn't, so mm-hmm. like technically I lost money okay. on it. A lot of air quotes, but now I'm back up again because I released something at the uh, the the fifteenth of September, and then um, last last according to this podcast mm-hmm. last last friday uh was the rest of that album okay. and then i have something coming out in november so i'm trying to like push and make more things um but also all the lo-fi hip-hop stuff is like the things that's like really mm-hmm. popping off so i'm trying to like make more low high lo-fi hip-hop but also can we just record a 10-hour video of you sitting at a desk with your cat <laughs> I, the, two, <laughs> I have two cats, two cats. Um, yes, it's not, it's, it's not the same song. Lo-Fi Girl is what, yeah, you're, yeah. what you're referring yeah, yeah, yeah. to, which is a very large record label yeah. stream, uh, YouTube stream that is constantly going yeah. and it got shut down once. Mm-hmm. And there was, there was a big deal about that. Cause like somebody was like, basic, that was just me saying, uh huh, into my water bottle, by the way. That's yeah, why it sounded weird. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, but for, for those who maybe the people who are listening that that are I'm just going to talk into my water bottle. Oh my god, for stop that. Podcast. Please don't. <laughs> the people that are uh, like that we we are featuring on here. Yeah. Like yes, you should go listen to them. Yes, you should go buy their vinyl. Yes. But release strategy if if you want to get those numbers. Yeah. Right. Um beat the algorithm. 
release every four to six weeks. The waterfall releases that we've, <laughs> which is driving me crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of sucks as a, as a user because then you're like, oh, they really, oh, it's just one song, yep. and the other three. Are, They're like, oh, the EP's out, and it's not an EP. It's just they released a fourth track, yeah, yeah, but it's like, no, there's an album coming. Like, yeah. You know what? There is one positive that came out of Spotify. Yeah, like a week ago or two. I don't know how long it's been a thing. Okay, you can now pre-save. Yeah, on the app. On okay, your phone. all right, all right, awesome, awesome, awesome. They've been yeah, people have been complaining about that for a while. Why now. was that not a thing before? That was such a pain in the butt. That, that it was a third party. Yeah, yeah. Like or you that you had to do it on the website. Yeah, you couldn't do it even on your phone. Yeah, you couldn't do it yeah. on your phone. It was so stupid. I mean, I don't use Spotify. So. No, but like. If you're going to have the pre-save option available, make it available like, yeah. in all ways. So that was that was helpful that it cuz and uh, this was like last Tuesday and then a thing came out on Friday. Like I didn't realize it was that quick. Yeah. But I did. It was like when I was in the app on my phone, it was like pre-save and I was like, "Oh, oh okay. Yes, I will pre-save." Like, <laughs> "Thank you." Yeah. That's a good time. So So it's my turn. Your turn. And also, uh so this band I found on TikTok. Mm. Um, and it was like, it was this song, but it was like the bridge. And then it was like, it was a live version of it. Okay. And the, the, the quote was like, when your bass player goes full Radiohead okay. or something like in, in the bridge. Okay. And then I'm like, what, like, does it actually like on, on TikTok, it sounded like it was a Radiohead song, Okay. but this doesn't really sound like a radio. Do you have song. the TikTok available? No. Okay. I mean, I could find it, but you go do it. If you're curious, you go do it. I'm not, I'm not he doesn't TikTok. have he doesn't have TikTok. I'm not on TikTok anymore. Anyways, but this song's called Nothing Special. It's my whole personality. Um, this is a band called Wilt, and not to be confused with the band called Wilt. Yeah, that's it, very true. <laughs> this this band only has five singles out. Oh. Um. And that probably means that they're not on any record label, uh-huh. and they don't have any tours. They have a video for all their songs. And according to uh, Hot on the Heels of their debut single, Gwen, Los Angeles-based Wilt, are excited to release their much-anticipated follow-up, Nothing Special, on January 6th, mm-hmm. 2023. But don't let the name fool you. These alt-rockers continue to wear their torn-up, grunge-inspired hearts on their <laughs> sleeves with something so fucking special. Recorded in guitarist Andrew's Bedroom studio, the entire self and and entirely self produced. It's the perfect soundtrack for the disenchanted. Cool. Bios are weird, man. <laughs> bios are weird. I hate bios. I got. I, I had to write one, and then like in. Hold on a second. Let me refer to the wall. Uh. In spring two, I'm gonna have to figure that out because I'm taking a class on branding and business and music business. There you go. And I'm not gonna like it. Class on Brandon and music business. I will help you with that. Branding. Brandon. Not Brandon. No, Brandon. Branding. No, Brandon. But uh, yeah, they're making some playlists. They're playing some good songs. Um, I think that this could be a Foo Fighters song. Ooh. I think this sounds like a Foo Fighters. I think the drums sound like Taylor Hawkins. I think that this could be a Foo Fighters song. Interesting. Anyways, this is Nothing Special by Wilt. Single. So far this like... Like new Foo Fighters, okay. like their most recent record, sure. which I guess is not. I, I mean, it's Dave Grohl on drums on that record. Yeah. Bass. Yeah, he said bass. Yeah. I like this a lot. The song? Yeah. They only have five songs. Well, I haven't listened to, listen to them all. I, I will. Yeah, I like her voice. Like this part is a Foo Fighters song. Okay. I hear it I as a Foo Fighters song. Don't listen to enough Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just know the singles. Which... Musically, probably not vocally. Obviously, because sure. Dave Gross is probably screaming at this point. Yeah. And it's more impressive that it was recorded in a bedroom studio. <laughs> yeah. Probably not the drums, but if they are, awesome. Yeah. Well, 
Was it all done in the bedroom studio, or, it, was, or it, was it just like the, the first couple songs, and then they it, got like more? It says that it was recorded in a basement like this studio. one in particular. Uh, hold on. It was in the about. Um. I mean, it could be nothing special, but don't let the name fool you. Oh, okay. So it is recorded in song, guitarist okay. Andrew's you did bedroom say that. studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And entirely self-produced. I think I was on doubt, or I was making jokes. So, yet again, good on you, Andrew. Andrew, please tell me where you <laughs> learned all this stuff. Yeah. And hit me up because I'd love to talk to you. I mean, it could have been drums in a, in yeah. a just in like the living room. Yeah. Because they're not like huge drums. They're no. probably like really close. I'm going to go follow these guys on Instagram because I want to know they have new stuff out. Oh, followed by Corey Wong. They've made it. their latest single it's uh january 6th this came out oh, so, okay. so no maybe? probably they have five things i don't think so because oh, like they're drums. yeah the drums are so like good. august 28th it says about like the video for the riff is dropping but and it just stops yeah and then there's record crackle yeah because it says like a broken record playing ha 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 it's great. I dig it so much. Yeah. And that was like last week kind of thing. I discovered them on, yeah. on the TikToks. Yeah, they're cool. I like them. So, yeah, you should uh, go listen to Wilt. Yeah. But you got to be careful because there's a band from the 90s <laughs> called Wilt. Yeah. From, from, I don't know. How does that work? It, uh, like, is there any kind of naming... So yes and no, and the reason I, know, I say no yeah, is because okay. if you just have to like show use of the name, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. So like there was a band Wilt from Kilkenny, Ireland, yeah, in 1998, but they broke up in 2003. This band has not been around since 2003. So because they a are in a different country. Yeah. B haven't been using the name. Mm-hmm. They probably can get away with it, right? Mm-hmm. Um. But didn't like. So like a hundred years from now. Well, Blink eight one eighty two. They had to change their name because they were just called Blink. They were just called Blink, and then they're like, "Oh no, we're Blink." It's like, okay, we'll be Blink. Um, one hundred eighty two. Yeah. And it's like, how about we just do one eighty two? Yeah. And then there, apparently, there's also a another Wilt from Canada. Yeah, because I like I've seen that before. Like even there's different groups name different things. Like sometimes on Spotify they'll like mess mm-hmm. them up. Yeah, or the code is one of them. Yeah, Dynamo is another one. There's like a reggaeton artist or something called mm-hmm. Dynamo or whatever. Um, but or or you'll like look and you'll look for the one with like the check mark. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they'll be they'll be that as well. But I just I just don't know how that works with with that stuff. I don't know. I mean, and, and you've heard of other people that like kind of change their names or like Michael B. Jordan, yeah, you know, and, and well, Katie, do you know Katy Perry? It was like like Katie Hudson. Yeah, yeah. So, but because of the actress, she didn't want to be. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's um, part of that is branding, obviously. Like you don't want to yeah, yeah. be confused with somebody else. But what I was going to say is, is like in a hundred years, mm-hmm. could I have, could I be the Beatles? Can I be Led Zeppelin? Gonna be Rolling Stones, like you know what I mean. Depends on how obscure they become, right? In a hundred years, yeah. I don't think they're going to be. No, but do you know? But do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. to the point, like yeah. Yep. There is. I'll be Gordon, an, Gordon Lightfoot. Yes, there is an actor, Loggins and Messina, who is like Just whatever his name, but it's like Somebody's the thirteenth. 
And he is not the 13th. Bo Barber the 13th? Th- yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. But the reason he is that is because he looked on IMDb of how many there were before him, and he was the 13th, <laughs> so he just changed it to that's, the 13th. That's pretty good. And then, okay, so there's this- What about Bo Barber, Children of America? Oh, my God. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> so there's this guy. Um, you, you, you're so, so funny to me. That's so funny You to think me. it's so hilarious. Bo Barber, Children of America. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Doesn't um, make more sense than Jesus, Children of America. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so there's this guy where mm-hmm. I can't find him on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That for some reason I follow this guy, and he's so hard to see his. Okay, so Struthless is okay. is his um, page, and what he's doing right now is he's creating. Um. Anyways, he's he's doing a, a series where like he's there's an idea that it starts with the letter A, okay. and then the second video is going to be something that begins with the letter B. And okay. his his idea was branding, so he's going to talk about branding. Like okay. like why is it so weird that M Night Shyamalan wrote Stuart Little? What? Oh, the movie. The movie. Yeah. Why Why does does Neil deGrasse Tice, Tyson? Always tweet like constantly, like the only place you can kiss somebody in a mirror is on the lips. Apparently, he's he said this. Our our mm-hmm. friend, <laughs> that maybe that's his brand. Oh sure, With, just, just yeah. says the same same Say, comment the on same people's thing. Facebook posts. Yeah, yeah. And then um, who was the third person that he mentioned in it? But anyways, it's it's branding. And then he he showed this video and it's like, here's a picture of all these white guys and they're all named Simon. And then it zooms into this guy in the middle. It's like, except for this guy, he has two eyes in his name. He legally changed his name to Simon, S-I-I-M-O-N. Okay. To stand out. Okay. So there's your brand. Your, sure. Like you have to kind of have your, your brand out there. So going back to the previous idea of having, are you okay? Yes. Why did it only do four clicks? Because I started on a much, on on a thing. That Anyways, was weird. I'm sorry. So uh, the brand going back to the previous idea of Wilt, you like if you can kind of show ownership of the brand mm-hmm. if no one else has trademarked it. Sure. In that space, because mm-hmm. Apple, mm-hmm. Um, Apple had to, records had to take it from was, actual apples was was the beatles and actual apples weren't really using it yeah because they're apples oh my god stop so the beatles had apple right and then apple computers came out and mm-hmm. they're like they they got sued and it was like but we're not we're not making music right. yeah and then they actually made sounds uh-huh oh right yeah yeah yeah. The, the, and then there's a there's a sound on the computer that's that's called so sue me yes because I, they're like what are they going to do sue us yeah it's like go ahead do it um, and then, then they got, they kind of got brought back up when they did, uh, when they did iTunes, they kind of mm-hmm. like, hey, but now you're, now you're in our space. Yeah. It's like, but so I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. But they had like, but we've owned this brand for a really long time. So right. now we're just going into music. Yeah. Anyways. And they were like, just saying. But like, who really <laughs> knows Apple as Apple Corp? Like the... Like the Beatles record label. Oh no, nobody does. Yeah, unless like it's, you're a Beatles it's, fan. Like, it's not a thing outside of the Beatles. I mean, they had other people signed to it but, in the '60s, but name them. You know, name one. Yeah, that's besides, not that's not a Beatle doing their side project. Exactly. Like, yeah. So, just saying, Bo. Just saying. Just oh my god, <laughs> I, I I missed it, and then it's it's I now know you missed in, it, so I had to bring it's it. It's just an inside joke now. Correct. Just saying. Just saying. Oh my god. Um, yeah, thanks for listening, folks. Follow yeah. us on Instagram. Follow Facebook. Subscribe to this podcast if you've made it this subscribe, far. Subscribe, yeah. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and there's a Discord if you mm-hmm. want to talk to us directly and have conversations about the podcast. Yeah, do that. Um, share this with your friends. You could share if you this, know. Share if you know. Share. Share, share with share. share. I'll forget that next week, so don't worry. <laughs> that won't be a recurring thing. I will forget. <laughs> But in probably like two months from now, I'll think of it again. And I'll be like, listen to this brilliant joke I came up with. <laughs> Remember to share it with share, guys. Because I forget things. Um, and then I'm still mixing stuff. So check me out. Yeah. I'm By the funky. way, speaking yeah. of, you know what's really hard for me in doing all this grad stuff? Everything? Well, that, yeah. 
I am not listening to as much music, as much new music, yeah, yeah. because what I do a lot is listen to either the things I'm transcribing, yeah. or the things I'm improvising over, yeah. or um, the things I'm arranging, yeah. or uh, what my when we do the research. Mm-hmm. The research class when I do the readings, I figure out like the discography essentially of like what they're writing about or who they're writing about, and I put that on. Yeah. So I figured that it's been it's been real tough. <laughs> I, I I was wondering if like if the every song... week I'm just going to be like Oscar Peterson, John Carl, John Coltrane, <laughs> yes. uh, Count Basie, whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Just just showing up with oh, this is what I was listening to yeah. all week. I might actually, because there's a, there's a tune I have to transcribe or have been transcribing, then I also have to then sing that solo. Yeah. It's Oscar. It's an Oscar Peterson track. I might bring that in. It's, cause it's what, really, it's really well done. By the well way, done. what song is stuck in your head right now? Uh, that one. The one, the Oscar Peterson song? Yeah, because I've okay. been listening to that solo. Gotcha. Over, mine's over mine's over the again. Wilt song that we just listened well, to. Well, that too, a little bit. But yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening, folks. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.